Today on Getting Real with the Housewives, what to expect from the Real Housewives of New Jersey reunion as Andy Cohen agrees that there should be a cast shakeup. Plus, NeNe Leakes opens up about dating as Kim and Croy are headed to trial. And Shannon Storms Bedore reveals if she and Tamara Judge could ever be friends again. I was feeling like I had to prove to her that I was a good friend, and that's not healthy for me. And I'm making healthy choices right mm -hmm. now. We've got that plus so much more on today's Getting Real with the Housewives. Everyone, and welcome to Getting Real with the Housewives. I'm Christina, and lots of big news to get into this week. So excited that OC is back. Um, what, uh, like Shannon says in the episode, it was perfect. Uh, we're going to hear from her in just a bit. But before we do, let's get into all the news, starting with the Real Housewives of New Jersey's upcoming reunion. As we know, it is going to look very different this season. So a source exclusively tells Us Weekly that the special is going to film at the same location as a season 14 finale, Rail Steakhouse. Um, it will be a non-traditional reunion where the plan is everyone is not in the same room. The cast will watch the finale and provide commentary. Teresa and Melissa will not be in the same room amid their ongoing feud, a source t tells us. Jennifer Aiden and Danielle will also not be in the same room together for obvious reasons. Uh, the plan is that Melissa, Margaret Josephs, Rachel Fuda, and Danielle will be together in one of the rooms, and Teresa, Jennifer, and Jackie Goldschneider will likely be together in another room. Dolores Catania and Jennifer Fessler will potentially float in between rooms, and a source says, you never know what else can happen. That is true. The insider shares that there is a potential for the New Jersey cast members to resolve storylines that are essential to the season. This could include Melissa and Teresa, who have not been on speaking terms all season long. The reunion will be a one-part special, and as of now, Andy Cohen is not hosting. However, a source adds that that could change. When we did reach out to Bravo, they were not available to comment. Still kind of up in the air about how this exactly will be structured. It's an interesting approach to the reunion. I would love to know if you think that this season is getting better as uh, the weeks go on. I kind of feel like it does. I mean, there's still such discourse between this group that I don't see it going forward uh, with this same group. But I mean, it is getting a little bit more entertaining. And I mean, Andy agrees as, as well that the, it is time for a Jersey shakeup. Uh, he said during the July 15th episode of um, Radio Andy, when a fan called in to ask Andy whether it was time to rebrand the Bravo show, he simply said yes. Uh, the fan noted that it's time to do what happened with New York and bring fresh faces in. Um, of course, referring to Bravo's, Bravo's decision to revamp uh, Roni. So the caller noted that she has love for Rachel Fuda and Danielle Cabral. She loves that combo um, uh, after they joined the cast last season. So in response, Andy said, I agree. At the end of the conversation, Andy teased upcoming plans for the show, saying, we're going to figure something out. We are all on the same page about that. So if you were all executive producers of The Real Housewives of New Jersey, what would you want to see happen? Which group would you want? Should we start fresh, start with an all new cast, keep Rachel and Danielle since they're a little bit newer? I would love to know what you think about that. All right, well, Nene Leakes cannot believe how different the dating world has become ever since she was first courted by her late husband, Greg. She told us the dating pool actually has changed over the years. My husband actually courted me. I don't even think they use that word anymore. He actually picked me up with roses and chocolate and I thought it was corny at the time but I still learned, honey, that was the right way to go. Now she first met Greg a while back. They married one year later and were together for nearly 25 years before he passed away at the age of 66 in September of 2021. But it's not to say that Nini hasn't experienced some sparks in recent months. She added, I have kind of dated just one guy off and on, and he's a nice guy. I do like him, and he's attractive and all those things. I don't know what the future holds. Well, these days, Nini is looking for a man who is emotionally available and can bring something to the table. Hopefully, Nini is finding uh, the man of her dreams. Uh, you know, I'm sure it is um, very different. You were married for 25 years, and, you know, getting back into the dating pool while also, you know, still grieving uh, her husband. It's got to be a very different gold time in her life and you know uh, but I would love to know if you'd like to see Nini back on our screens you know there was uh, lots of shakeups going on in Atlanta so yeah. I wonder if she will ever make a Bravo return I mean I know she's had her lawsuits and things like that so it probably wouldn't be so easy but she was great television uh, speaking of great television Kim Zolciak um, and her estranged husband Croy their divorce is set to go to trial. So a judge in Atlanta's Fulton County Superior Court scheduled the estranged pair's case for November 5th 
and November 6th. Um, so this is according to legal documents that were obtained by TMZ. For the documents, Kim and Croy are recommended to undergo mediation ahead of the trial date. If the pair do not agree to satisfactory terms, the case will resume in court. Basically, they the judge is giving them a timeline, being like, you need to figure this out before November, otherwise I'm figuring it out for you. So they really got to get it together. This has been going on for so long. They're still living together. I'm sure it's like a war of the roses in that house. It's, it's messy and it's time for everybody to just come to some sort of conclusion and just realize they're both not going to be completely happy with what's going to happen, but they're definitely not going to be happy if a judge has to decide for them. All right, well, like we said, Real Housewives of Orange County is back, and in one word, it is just perfect. Uh, it was such a amazing first episode. It's going to be a great season. And we cut up with Shannon Storms Vador herself, who talked about the end of her friendship with Tamara. Take a look. Did I you do. and Tamara like get into like a screaming match? Did that happen? Or well, I said that like... I said that she had a big ego, and yeah. which got back to her. And okay. yes, she does. And I would, and I've said, well, you, you do, sure. mm -hmm. yeah. And <laughs> and um, and I was upset with her when John first met Alexis that she was like commenting on Alexis's photos. It's like, what what are you doing? What what are you doing? Yeah. And so now they're big buddies. I, I just after it, everything that, that that you've gone through with the lawsuit too, that's got to be. Hurtful. It just not none of it makes sense mm -hmm. except that maybe it's just a little bit of overproduction and mm -hmm. too much story focus. Yeah. Do you ever foresee the two of you being friends again? I don't. You know, I don't because I now can look back and see pretty much every season that I've been in with Tamara. There's mm -hmm. always an issue that she has with me. Either I did something or I didn't do yeah. something, and. It's okay. Yeah. We don't need to be friends then. Like, I, 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 I walk, she says she walks on eggshells around me. I'm sorry that you feel that way, but I walked on eggshells around her. Mm -hmm. I was feeling like I had to prove to her that I was a good friend. And that's not healthy for me. Yeah. And I'm making healthy choices mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. Do you, did you feel like any, anything that she said this season was out of, like, friendship because she was concerned? Well, I feel as though she said things to make it appear as though, mm -hmm. you know, like I think she said, I said things she didn't want to hear. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I, I heard right. things that you said. Yeah. And I took them into account and I did what I thought was best for me. And I know that that was a good choice because I know how I feel right now. Right. Yeah, based on what she said, it doesn't seem like the two of them are going to be uh, friends uh, or the Trace Amigas anytime soon. All right, well, let's get into our social spotlight of the week. And after breaking up with ex-fiance Paul Vernon, uh, Bethany Frankel has decided to schedule a first date with a mystery man. But according to her TikTok, she had a change of heart after spotting The Bachelor moments before their meeting began. Take a look. I just saw them walking on the street. It's not the guy's not my type. And I'm all dressed up and I ran it to Brink because she was having dinner um, with my assistant and she was like, just go. I'm like, I, I don't want to waste time. I'd rather be home with you. I don't want to go. So I'm not going. Oh, hopefully he wasn't checking her TikTok. Uh, before the night came to an end, Bethany decided to stop by Rocco Desprecito's new restaurant, Il Pelicano, Southampton, partly because she wasn't wasting this outfit. She had her daughter, Bryn, go back into the, uh, the restaurant to see what this guy was all about. But like I said, hopefully he wasn't checking her TikTok that night and realized that it was about him. All right, well, that is it for this week's episode of Getting Real with the Housewives. Let me know what you would like to see in Jersey. If you're loving the new uh, season of OC, lots to chat about. So keep commenting, keep subscribing. I'll see you next week.